Brolin. Same room. Slide four, take one. Robin brought something very important to to movie because everything that he wrote was clearly so morally engaged, so morally serious. Nobody could ever say of Robin, uh, who looked rather like D.H. Lawrence, no one could ever say of him that he was a, an intellectual teddy boy or whatever. Not long after he became associated with Movie, and writing some of its best essays, um, he got invited to uh, write a book, and there weren't any film books much then. There were no director monographs. There were some books in, from France. They were doing director monographs in a small way. Uh, the famous um, Hitchcock book by Romé and Chabrol. But there weren't any equivalents in Britain. And it was quite a, um, uh, a big move when um, Robin was commissioned to write a book, Hitchcock's films. And R Robin's book launched such a lot of things which happened in the later 60s, which included... Ian Cameron setting up a series of books, modest books, movie paperbacks, to which Robin contributed, and I contributed for that matter, um, a, a little book on Laurel and Hardy, um, which was symptomatic somehow of the fact that let's celebrate people like Laurel and Hardy as well as Hitchcock. <laughs> A number of, of um, movie paperbacks came out in, in batches, and two of them were written by another significant figure of the time, uh, who I think needs bracketing with uh, Robin Wood as, as the most influential single critic of that formative period, and that's Raymond Derniat. And Ray was very different from Robin, um, firing off in all directions, and um, he wrote movie paperbacks about Franjou. 15 février, 20 février, une semaine après la cicatrisation, quelques taches de pigmentation apparaissent. Plus tard, la palpation révèle de petits nodules sous-cutanés. Le douzième jour, la nécrose du greffon hétéroplastique est patente. Vingtième jour, les premières ulcérations se produisent accompagnées d'un décollement du derme et de signes d'infection. Le greffon nécrosé doit être retiré. And also Bunuel, so another example, it wasn't all about American commercial cinema. Tu no te muevas. Ray was taken on board by Movie and he wrote uh, some articles for Movie initially under the pseudonym of O.O. O. Green. He had to have a pseudonym because he was writing, he was making a living more or less, um, or part of his living, post Slade. Uh, by writing for a magazine, Films and Filming, which was really the other magazine uh, from Sight and Sound, which was much more pluralist and, and a bit of a bit messy, uh, but it, it accommodated a lot of people, including Ray. And the editor didn't much like movie coming up in as a rival, and I think he made it clear to Ray that he wouldn't be happy if he wrote for movie, so instead O.O. O. Green wrote for movie. Um, and then later on... Um, Ray would write under his own name. 